Hi everybody. Um, so, two or three of the most interesting places, perhaps the most interesting place to do shipping uh, in the world uh, is in Southeast Asia and basically in Indonesia here and the Philippines. So quite interestingly, um, we're going to talk primarily about uh, basically sea shipping and air shipping. So there's basically land, air, and sea, but um, we're not really going to look at land shipping too much here in the Philippines, um, maybe outside of the island of Java, because essentially on islands and a lot of remote places, uh, the roads just simply don't exist. Um, so for example, in Madagascar, um, I saw a person that was trying to get across the country, um, not north-south, but east-west. That's actually the shorter distance. And basically the roads just fell apart on their journey. Um, there was holes size of trucks, um, bridges were out. Um, it just was totally impossible even to travel across the country without anything. So, um, and even parts of Africa um, and other areas, um, remote villages are just completely inaccessible by car or truck. Um, I mean, they still do it um, and it's totally amazing. Uh, you can look at some videos online um, about how to uh, get to some of these places, but we're going to primarily focus on ocean and air um, and basically look at that um, in this region. Um, and you can kind of see these are the shipping tracks um, tracked by marine traffic. Um, so you can kind of see in this area, I can zoom out uh, here um, and you can see basically Earth and what's going on with that. So um, this is the global global shipping map, and you might want to take a careful look at that. And basically what I did is I removed all the vessels here from that um, and then kept the density map. And you can kind of add or remove that, uh, any brightness you want, um, and then also add um, kind of the uh, background images here. So in terms of really interesting shipping, um, what I would say is that um, near the equator is super interesting. Um, and then definitely near uh, the Caribbean down in here is very interesting. And also actually Europe is very interesting shipping. And it turns out um, that most of the companies uh, that you can invest in, um, at least in the New York Stock Exchange, are out of Greece. Um, so Mediterranean uh, for a long time um, historically has been uh, very important for shipping. Uh, industry. So um, I'm not saying that um, it's less interesting or more interesting. There just happens to be more islands here, and uh, that makes for a little bit different kind of shipping uh, style in general. So the satellite map is under layers, and then you just have to select satellite map. Um, so we're going to go up here and do ship type, and we're going to enable cargo vessels first. And you can kind of see how cargo works. Um, and then you can see here, this is oil. Um, so red being oil. Um, and then actually fishing is very interesting. Now what you find actually is that um, we're perhaps overfished in some regions that we really need to rethink about, um, particularly in the Pacific Ocean. There's quite a lot of fishing going on in here. Um, some of that maybe should be uh, stay closer to land um, and leave the fish to fish. but. Uh, Anyway, um, that's a very important topic. And then there's pleasure craft, which is also very interesting to look at. Um, you can see quite a lot uh, in Europe here and actually quite a lot in uh, northern Norway. Um, I would add even another area, which is the pole. Um, this is going to be pretty interesting um, sailing, but uh, it's actually very extremely cold um, and cargo as well. So the North Pole actually might be eventually uh, the most interesting place. Uh, to work on in terms of the ocean um, and actually Antarctica um, being one of the more boring places um, with the exception of maybe the tail down here you can see um, this is where uh, basically in Ar Argentina there's a city called Ushurua and they basically um, do uh, some tours of Antarctica there um, but uh, it's still a very big area uh, of sailing down there, there's a lot of whales and also wildlife um, to think about in terms of protecting. So uh, we're gonna go through and try to look at the shipping map here. So I wanna take a moment just to look at the, um, you can add live traffic onto this or 
typical traffic um, and that was what we're going to use right here so um, just because it is nighttime there and daytime here so we want to kind of look at daytime traffic around 9 a.m. or so when traffic would be pretty heavy so uh, this gives you an idea for basically how few roads there are um, let me switch this really quick uh, to the United States so you can see the difference here so sorry I'm gonna switch this to Europe so you can just see Europe uh, being a much different landscape for um, basically the roads so it's not just Google Earth um, you know Google Earth does have a lot for Latin America um, let me show that really quick so actually there isn't a whole lot but here you can take a look really quick uh, basically at Buenos Aires and uh, Sao Paulo area so you can see that's kind of an actually Chile has a little bit of some space here so again take a quick look at this map um, for a second here so unfortunately I'm doing this uh, in the daytime here and you might want to try flightradar24.com uh, during the nighttime if you're in the United States or Europe um, but you can vaguely start to see all the Europe airports that come in here. Some of these are very small airports. So you can kind of see uh, the airports in Indonesia here um, and then Papua New Guinea uh, which is basically half Indonesian um, and then actually uh, Philippines and even the island here. Um, so I'm going to keep that kind of towards the main top 100 or so airports um, but it is really helpful to understand at a global level uh, essentially how few aircraft are in Africa and in Latin America. So you can kind of see this is daytime here and you see quite a lot of not only airports but air traffic in the United States, Europe, some in South America here but so few in Africa um, and actually even in the nighttime there is maybe three times more traffic in the daytime here. So we're not really a lot of these airports close at midnight for instance just so you can't land at night um, but uh, it is something to think about um, in these remote areas so basically shipping um, is the primary means and it turns out that something like 90 percent of all goods are shipped essentially not by air not by road but actually by the ocean so um, these maps become very important um, for the shipping industry in general, the, the ocean maps. Now, before we get to even more detail, um, it is very important to understand the flight map. So I did a one-way map out of Bali. Um, now, Bali is a very nice place to stay and um, relax, and I specifically did not pick Jakarta. Um, I will look at Manila as well here in a moment, um, but you can kind of start to see the flights here. So you're basically talking about $150, uh, one-way trip to get out of Bali to another country that is pretty nice or a nice choice um, there. You can get a lot of $50 flights. You can see to Singapore um, being a very active flight as well. Um, but uh, essentially what you want to do, um, let me grab the city so you can see. So this is the Densepar Airport. Now we're going to actually switch here gears and look at the Jakarta Airport. If you click on more here, you can get a list of the top flights and it actually is Bali um, here in Dense Bar um, and you can see Medan being number two. Um, so Makassar, that's an island of Sulawesi and, and you have different spots here. Now you actually have Singapore being the fifth busiest airport. So that's very important to know about. Um, so you basically realize that Singapore is a very important place um, for air traffic and for shipping. Um, and the reason behind that um, is interesting. So I'm gonna add Australia into this picture here, but essentially, if a lot of the shipping is coming out of this region, uh, essentially Shanghai area and actually uh, Beijing and Korea, uh, and actually in 2018, uh, most of the boats were made uh, in South Korea and today most of the boats are actually made in China so in just a few short years China has become the leader in the shipping industry uh, in terms of building the boats um, so basically you have all that shipping coming down through here um, rather than crossing directly across the Pacific um, through here and then around this little area in Singapore and so that becomes vital um, and we'll add the ships here so you can see basically what's going on. So that's that, and I'm going to add cargo to make it even more confusing. So you, you can start to see um, how complex this gets um, in terms of cargo and oil. Um, so let's even 
pull this out here. So basically you see that this is kind of the hub right here out of Shanghai, um, that being Shanghai right in the tip there. So there's a major port there um, and basically heads down through here. So we're supposed to be looking at Indonesia and Philippines and all this area here, but this is kind of how it interacts um, with the rest of the world. So I'm going to turn that off for a moment. Um, so basically, it is almost easier to see, but a lot of that is shipping coming out of here. <coughs> Excuse me, up through there. So another big area is right in Indonesia. Now, actually, there wasn't a whole lot of shipping. It looks like that from the tracks, but basically, it's in this pocket in here. So let's add the vessels again. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, I'll just add them again here. So you can see there's kind of like a whole area right in there um, just... Uh, kind of packed with boats um, and as well across from Vietnam you can see there so um, and it's actually so many boats in here that it just doesn't even show up um, as we zoom in uh, we can start to see a little more detail so here you can start to see how backed up it gets in Singapore so basically this is right this peninsula here Malaysia and Singapore so you can see that that's kind of where it is and I think even the more we zoom in, the more we're going to start to see that. So it's just really packed right here. And that's a lot for fueling um, the boats as well. So a lot of fueling is going on there. Um, and that's an important thing to look at. So let's go down here and look at actually what's going on uh, in Jakarta. <coughs> Excuse me. So it turns out the Earth at Night map um, is almost better than the population map. Um, at least for seeing what's going on in the region. So you can see essentially um, what's going on here in China, right? Um, and then you see basically the island of Java being pretty lit up here, um, as well as this pocket in here. Um, and then you got this whole area of Manila. Um, actually, I didn't realize how much power is being used right here on Sulawesi. Uh, but you can see Singapore and this whole coastline being very busy, um, and then Bangkok and so on. So. In terms of the shipping, um, you know, you basically have these hubs in here that you're probably going to see a lot of boats uh, shipping to anyway. Um, and even Malaysia, <coughs> Penang uh, being an alternative. Um, and then up here uh, in Phuket, um, Calcutta on the coast of India. And you can even see Sri Lanka out in the, on the far lines there. So I'm just going to zoom out for a minute. <coughs> kind of show you the equator here, the importance of temperature uh, in this region. So um, basically, uh, the equator runs right through here. If you spin this around, you can basically follow the equator, um, right? And we basically have the equator run right in through here. So you can see that Florida is quite far from the equator, uh, maybe 25 degrees or 30 degrees or so uh, from the equator. So um, basically, that region right in here is the equator line. Um, now if I add the climate map on that, you can start to see that all of this is essentially the same temperature, a pretty warm um, a red area. You can see the jungle here, and you can see basically how this relates to Florida, right? So this is actually quite a bit hotter than even Florida um, in terms of what we're talking about, um, and very jungly. So um, it's important to think about that. So again, uh, we're gonna look at some more nautical maps here in a moment, um, but you can basically start to see uh, the importance of Shanghai in China, the important second being Hong Kong um, in that region, and then actually Thailand, right? So you can see Bangkok here, and even uh, this down here, uh, I think it's Ho Chi Minh City. So, um, and then basically uh, how uh, Jakarta is really important, but it's actually more distributed across the island um, then, <clears throat> so there's basically the combination of everyone here in Indonesia is quite a lot, um, becoming almost a Shanghai, um, at least in terms of the light. Um, and then obviously India being very uh, busy here <clears throat> up in the valley. So one of the reasons I'm primarily looking at this region um, is because in the future, uh, maybe a lot of people might want to actually live in these areas, perhaps, um, or even vacation here. So... Jakarta uh, uh, and basically this island right here, uh, you can see uh, being pretty busy uh, for tra uh, visiting. 
So I'm going to look at this map here. Uh, it's a shipping route map that someone made up, but you can kind of see um, some of the shipping right in this region uh, between all these islands. Uh, and But this basically primarily just focuses on Jakarta. So I'm going to pull off the vessels here, um, and basically we'll look at this map this way so we can kind of see, move my mouse around, and look at it in more detail. So um, basically you see this kind of pathway heading up through here to Manila, um, maybe down through Jakarta and so on. So this shipping pathway through here is actually so direct um, that it doesn't really even hit any of these islands. So you kind of have to come in through here. Um, and some of these areas can be quite dangerous uh, for sailing um, and other areas. So I'm gonna switch this here uh, to look at Manila really quick, um, just to see the flight difference. So you can see Hong Kong being a little bit cheaper here. Um, and you can see the Bali flight, um, Singapore flight also being extremely cheap. Uh, and then you start to see some other flights out to New Delhi and so on. So uh, Bali is an interesting spot uh, to look at. Um, let's also look at a place in Thailand. Uh, look at Thailand. So this turns out to be a really nice little resort town. Um, and there is some cheap flights there as well. So you can see even a $25 flight from Bangkok um, and so on. So Bali being $89. So uh, Bali, uh, Bali is actually a pretty good airport um, to look at um, just to compare so you can kind of see here. Um, and even Hong Kong, uh, but it could be pretty pricey um, to stay there. But let's look at Hong Kong uh, just because it's such a busy city. So you can start to see how these flights, you get Tokyo on the map here for about $150 uh, and so on. So I'm going to kind of finish up the topic here. Um, and you can see uh, in the currency, it's basically been devaluation uh, in Indonesia. So that is kind of a concern. Um, see kind of an inflection point here where it even might even increase in recent years. So I would conclude that you basically want to stay close to the major cities um, and then look at some of the tourist attraction zones um, like we looked at for Bali here. Um, so some of these tourist attraction islands may be interesting to kind of work with. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the study. Let me know if you got any questions. Thanks.